Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Founders Grid sponsored by Gaper.io. Today we have Jared. Jared is a fintech sales veteran. You know, he's worked in multiple different verticals when it comes down to fintech. Jared, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, looking forward to chatting with everyone and hello to everyone out there. So before we start, can you give us like a brief background about what you've been up to, what you've been doing? Sure. The last six years or so, since about 2014, I got involved in the startup world in fintech particularly. Um, I guess you could formally say my experience started in financial services. I worked at Cantor Fitzgerald selling uh, market data to banks and hedge funds. And um, I did really well there and I started learning. I had you know, other skills and uh, that, you know, we didn't really realize I had until you start doing it. So, you know, move, move in career. And in 2014, I started with startups and I loved it seeing how these ecosystems are being built and you can actually, you know, there were so many resources because technology is growing by leaps and bounds that just allowed you to do things that weren't possible um, before, you know, just on a simple example, my, I really think the payment space is going to be the huge area moving forward for various reasons. Um, and just seeing now how it doesn't take one, two or three days to get your money when someone sends it electronically, like, you know, PayPal used to take a couple of days and, and it still does, but you also have an instant, um, there's a ability to get the money instantly transferred and, you know, they charge a premium for that, but that kind of stuff just wasn't around because you couldn't do it. So I've been poking around seeing, you know, where I think the next big areas are. And I've been reaching out to firms seeing, you know, what they're looking to do and if they're looking to grow and, and things along those lines. And I'm trying just to pick and choose and kind of see where uh, things are starting to go. All right. Got it. So, you know, interesting times due to COVID, just trying to make the conversation much more relevant towards today's time, right? So, sure. Uh, let's start with the mental health first, and then we'll discuss the fintech space. Sure. So, March, April, so I look after sales and marketing in my company, right? So, sales individuals by nature are extroverts, they get the energy from people around. And for me, doing sales or marketing over Zoom has been challenging, you know, and I've been trying to oh, come yeah. up with my own kind of like productivity hacks and all. And in June, I started realizing that I was just getting burned out, you know, doing 30 calls a day without meeting anyone in person. So then I started doing those changes. So can you walk us through the journey? What how your last six months have been like and how you kind of like whether you got burnt out and then what activities you picked up and stuff like that well i mean to be honest the last six months have been super super slow um i actually lost my, my job in the beginning of the pandemic and i've been doing some consulting here and there but it's exactly what you said you know you can only accomplish so much on a zoom call and it's great to lay the foundation and you know to sometimes put things on in a holding pattern if that's the case but you know mo moving forward it's it's always you have to build the rapport and you have to stay on top of these guys and as a salesperson the biggest hurdle sometimes is dancing the line between you know staying on top of things with your prospect and driving them crazy that's my biggest challenge um especially right now you know you asked me what i was doing in the six months and it's literally negotiating you know with contacts and when i say negotiating i don't mean like negotiating deals i mean like negotiating just staying in touch with them without you know pushing too hard if i need something versus staying on top of them making sure i stay in the in the back of their mind does it does that make sense yeah, it definitely does. It definitely does. So, fintech, technology, financial sector, you know, they've been uh, banking, insurance, investments, they've kind of, if you think of it, they're kind of like being the least receptive when it comes down to change, you know. Even Wall Street getting rid of the tie has been a challenge for them for a while. <laughs> yeah, that it has. But due to COVID, everyone has been forced to work through home. So now yeah. there's a discussion going on that, you know, 
the technology transition is going to be the fastest in the financial sector than ever. Totally so, what are your thoughts on that? And do you think we're going to see the systems, the banks being receptive towards remote workings and other kind of things more now? They have no choice. Um, technology and employees, to an extent, I think, are going to start gathering more power. Um, the the whole COVID and lockdown and pandemic situation has really brought to light several things. One, two important things it's brought to light is many of these huge firms, whether they're a bank or a huge fintech like PayPal, realize they don't need hundreds of thousands of square feet in office buildings anymore. They can be as productive, if not more productive, with half or a third of that real estate. They're basically the take home message is employers are finally starting to learn after 40 years that people do work from home when they say, I'm going to work from home today. They realize that that stuff has happened. And then there's a whole separate conversation that there are fintechs that are also making technology that monitors at home employees with screenshots of what they're doing and stuff like that. But that's kind of like beyond the scope of this conversation. The, um, <clears throat> The, the other thing besides the, the real estate, the, the corporate real estate, is the adoption of technology. It's, it's, I think it's going to start skyrocketing even faster. You know, when I worked at Cantor Fitzgerald, I was at a, a keynote at the Bond Market, um, Bond Market Association trade show, and my CEO at the time was doing a keynote address, and he made a really interesting comment. I found it pretty aggressive and arrogant, but I liked it. I even used it as the bottom of my email thing, and he said, I'm often early but rarely wrong. And what he was referring to was the adoption of technology. There are a lot of firms and people, both individual and professional, that are early adopters. And sometimes stuff doesn't work right or it's not as efficient as it should be. And that could be because there isn't widespread adoption or because people just don't know how to use it yet. And once you know, once it becomes robust and hits a minimum usage level, all of a sudden it starts skyrocketing and goes up there. So I think we are in a great time for fintech. I think it's going to unite a lot of different services. I think it's going to open up opportunities that weren't opened up before. And it's also going to allow investors, you know, to be able to invest in things possibly they weren't able to invest in. Um, I don't know what that could be off the top of my head, but I'm sure there's something there because information is the most valuable commodity. You know, we, we're seeing more and more information all over the place. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, Jared, la so uh, in your uh, uh, introduction, you mentioned that uh, the payment space getting more yes. right so can you elaborate yes. uh, that would be my last question because sure yeah speak for longer but my marketing team forces me to keep them within 15 oh days. yeah totally so i need your thoughts on the payment space being disruptive look money money is the equalizer what is the world based around it it's based around trade and in order to have trade you either have to have, have an even exchange of goods or you have to be offer you have to offer more for something that you want you you get the drift with the payment space we're already seeing the ability to do cool things as i was referring to before instant transactions instant tr processing of payments instant transfer of payments with the advent, you know, with crypto and blockchain going up there, that adds a new element too. But payments is going to be the uniter. At some, who knows what's, you know, we can get into a government and a philosophy conversation because that kind of links in with payments where I'm going because with all the stimulus and the way GDP is all over the place and, you know, with stimulus and all of that stuff. Who knows what's going to happen with you know individual currencies for different areas? That could all you know crypto could really take off in there. But the payment people are going to need to be able to buy things you know instantly. They're going to be able to need to buy things from far away. They're going to need to trade in order to live. How is all this going to be possible if you have currencies that are going crazy all over the place? There has to be a unifier. And I think there is a tie between blockchain slash crypto and this payments. I like what I'm seeing in payments. I think it's going to get even better. And, you know, there's going to be some new cool things that are going to be happening that we can't even, you know, think of right now. And someone's sitting there in a room thinking of it. Trust me.
Got it. Got it. Got it. Jared, thank you so much for being on the show. Take care of yourself. Absolutely. And good luck. Thanks. Uh, great speaking with everyone and uh, everyone have a great day. Thanks, Mustafa.